When I was growing up, I had visions of fantastical giant robots that would fight for good and amazing vehicles that had a configuration for every situation. Cool engineers and inventor types that were knowledgeable enough to get out of any predicament. Or strong warrior characters with indestructible weapons that fought to protect that which was good. The influence of these shows told me of what I was to become, an engineer. I've spent countless hours of contemplating on how I can make that which I've seen into reality. Now I have the power to do it. I've designed and created many things and I've been doing it for over 25 years. And now it's time for me to share my process with you. I draw inspiration from concept art, shapes, ideas, media, nature, whatever. I'm going to show you how to take a vision and step by step make it into a reality. I'll share with you the tricks that I've used to help me create things for over 25 years. Now, join me as I endeavor to create a whole new plethora of projects. From the simple, the niche, to the overly complex. This is designed by purpose. Check one, two, one, two, one, two. Good evening. Yo, good evening to everybody out there in live streaming land. Oh yeah, let me get these audio, this audio right. Yeah. What's going on, folks? Good evening, and thank you for tuning in to this first installment of Design by Purpose. I am your host, Robotronics09, DBP. You know me. That's right. And I am bringing you a new show, another show, a new show, all about engineering goodness. Right? Let me see if I can do this without messing everything up. Oh uh, yeah, so let me see here. Pushing buttons, pushing buttons, pushing buttons. Let's see here, here we go. Let's get this going. All right, so yeah, formalities out of the way, you know. <sighs> Again, you know how I like to do, I like to make stuff, I like to uh, create shows. So this is my new show, right? My new show, Designed by Purpose. And this is not a DJ show. Although it could be a DJ show if we want to make it that way. But right now it is not a DJ show. It is an engineering artistic show, right? So let me switch this view up real quick. All right. So what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be doing CAD projects. We're going to be doing engineering products, uh, projects, right? So I've been building stuff for a long time. If you saw a little bit of the video, uh, I've been working. Um, building all sorts of robotics and prototypes and things for like 20, 25 plus years, right? And um, I want to do more of that. So I figured I'd do it uh, for myself a lot of times anyway. Why not use it as a opportunity to, to, to interact and share with other people, other creators, other engineers, other designers. I figured we could do that and kind of do it together. Um, and then we could bounce, uh, bounce tips and tricks off of each, each other or whatever on, on doing CAD, computer aided design for those of you new. So yeah, so that's kind of what it's about. I'm kind of giving you, I'm kind of uh, giving you a little short end of the stick right now, a little short rundown, but um. It'll be more apparent what we'll be doing, what we'll be doing in here uh, as I go along. So with that being said, let me just kind of go over what I got here, right? Um, we're, this is CAD, so this is computer aided design. There's, there's really not a whole lot of uh, streams like that on Twitch. I was looking for them. I couldn't find a whole lot of design. I found some uh, for Blender, doing 3D modeling, gaming, stuff like that, but not much for uh, engineering or creating or prototypes or uh, manufacturing production or anything like I mean that's kind of weird but um, you know and there's and there's videos there's uh, channels on YouTube that do that sort of thing but I was looking for a twitch channel so I didn't see one so I said well 
why not I just make one? So that's what we're doing here. And what you're looking at right now, my current project, if you look at the layout here on the screen, right? You look at the layout on the screen, I got my current project. My current project is my Hero Transmitter, Hero TX. So, um, just to kind of give you a quick rundown of what's going on here. I'm building a, uh, a radio. A radio, if you're familiar with remote control cars, airplanes, helicopters, drones now, um, you name it. Uh, they have, most of them have radio control devices, transmitters. And um, I could just as well buy one, but me being an engineer, uh, want a designer, I want something that speaks to my design aesthetic. So what I've done is I said, well, you know what? Um, I just want to design my own. And so that's what we're doing here. Um, for you, those interested, I'm using SolidWorks. This is SolidWorks 2017. I haven't upgraded because uh, I just didn't want to spend that $1,000 or whatever <laughs> as of yet. So, And then I, don't, I haven't even used the 2017 version to its fullest anyway. So I figured, let me just use what I have. So um, that's the software package we'll be modeling in. Um, let me also, uh, what I'm, what I'm showing you on my screen, I have, oops, oops, I have my, uh, keyboard layout. So I always figured that, um, when I see people doing CAD or when I'm looking at tutorials and stuff, a lot of times I feel like, um, they don't share with you as much how they do it. I mean, I, I don't know how to explain it. It's just like a, a like it, when you're watching game gamers on Twitch or whatever. I mean, some some people show their their keystroke movement, especially like in really competitive games. People who've done a lot with macros and stuff, and they have special keyboards, they show it. And so that's what I'm kind of doing here with CAD. Um, you can get really skilled with it. I I'm a uh, what do you say intermediate at best, but. I plan to get better and that's another reason why I'm starting this live stream and doing this endeavor is so that I can improve my CAD skills that I can get quicker I can learn um, more efficient ways to do things more efficient ways to model um, utilize macros and things as, as such so kind of give you a little explanation of what I got going on here of course you see the my I, and I'm, I'm kind of like a Logitech, Logitech fanboy Maybe, because everything I got is Logitech, but um, maybe I can get a sponsorship from them one day. But let me just uh, put in the work first. So we got our TrackMan, wireless TrackMan, the MX. I believe I had it for a while. Uh, unfortunately, throughout um, this pandemic, these last two years of using it, I've actually kind of hurt my wrists a little bit. So I'm gonna put on my gloves in a minute. Um, also, I got the wireless um, Logitech keyboard. You can actually um, switch control three computers with it. Um, I, this was a really, I, I like it. This was a really good buy. Um, it's really good on batteries. It's lasted long, a long time so far. So I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, here is just some generic uh, cheap mouse. Um, and I'm using, actually I don't even need, I just realized uh, I don't even really need to even use that right now. I can, but I don't have to. I can use my uh, my other MX. So this is uh, a Logitech MX traveling wireless mouse. Um, I like it. You can control up to two computers with it. Um, and it's got the uh, momentum scroll wheel where you click the button and you can push it forward. So that, that's what I'm gonna be working with. The other, this other option right here that I have on my desk, on my uh, keyboard landing is my Logitech G13 uh, keypad, which uh, is fully macro enabled. You can, you can program it to do a lot. I actually don't have it hooked up right now because I have a lot of, a lot of peripherals hooked up. And um, so I don't have that one in the mix right now, but it will be in the mix soon. And um, I'll start mapping keys uh, for SolidWorks in there to make some some uh, make my use a little bit more efficient. So that's just a quick rundown. I am going to put on my beat up uh, wrist 
guard gloves. I know they look horrible. I'm going to make some new ones or I'm going to, I'm not going to buy some new ones because I figure man, I should be able to just make these for this, for what they are. I mean, they're just kind of like a sewed little half glove with um, a little bean bags in there. So I use these for uh, my wrists and they work pretty decent outside of the fact that they tore up really bad and um, all the beads have a lot of the beads have fallen out and I had to keep patching up because they keep ripping. So if, iMac, if you uh, if you ever watch my video, iMac, if you ever see this smart glove, I think you've changed them out because these are old. These are years old now. But um, definitely check your material because this material is awful. <laughs> it's, it's straight awful, you know, for long time use. But all right, let's get back to it. All right. So what we're going to be doing today or what I'm going to continue doing today um, is work on my Hero TX. Now, um, I showed you the keyboard layout. Of course, you see me. Let me show you the other layout. So this, aside from all the mess I have over here, let me move some of this stuff. I would like you to take your eyes on. And you can see right here, I actually have the Hero TX. Well, at least I have the, the start of it. I'll bring it over here. So what I've done is I've, what you see modeled on the screen, I've started to 3D print it. It's not finished and that's what we're doing now. That's what we're about to do or I'm gonna be working on uh, over a series of many videos. It's not gonna get finished in one. Um, is basically I'm gonna redesign this for 3D printing. So this is the the first prototype, um, it's not the mock, well, it's the first prototype, first version one, I'd say version one, right? And um, this is kind of trying to see how it's gonna look, how it's gonna fit, how it's gonna function. Electronically, the control works. I've actually, um, I've used it before for a robot and the control works, it's just now I need the actual um, hardware done. So let me show you what it what it used to look like, at least portion portion of what it used to look like. Let me see. Well, where did it go? Where did it go? Give me a second. And I'm back. All right. So yeah, so this was my original control. So I used some cardboard to put it together uh, and build a mock-up and this is it. Actually worked pretty good. Um, it got me the rough dimensions and how, how the form and fit should be, so to speak. But now I'm ready to make it into um, a more durable, longer lasting um, configuration. So that's what we're doing. That's what you'll be privy to as we move along in this journey together. So thank you. Thank you again for tuning in. Again, this is the first live stream of uh, Design by Purpose. And we'll just keep trucking along like that. Of course, this current project is the Hero TX. We have different music. We're, I'm on the, the synthwave vibe. So that's pretty much kind of where we're going to be at. Um, yeah, we're going to roll with that. So with that being said, I'm going to get in. We've got probably about 40-something 40, 40 minutes of work tonight. And we'll go from there. All right, so let's see here. Uh, what are we going to do? All right, so this earlier, I did some work on the model here. Um, so I can kind of briefly kind of tell you, give you an idea of how this is going, how, how I've built it so far. So this is an assembly, SolidWorks. It's in a SolidWorks assembly. And I've created 
these three parts, the bottom, um, oops. I don't know why that whole thing doesn't highlight. I don't know if there's something I'm doing wrong. I thought it should highlight. Yeah, the bottom or the back, depending on how you want to look at it. The, um, the main body, which would be the, you could say the top. Well, I got four parts here. I got five parts here actually, right? The main body the top and then then it has this particular model has uh, face plates. So I have this top face plate. I have this uh, left joystick face plate. I have this front face plate. Front face plate. And now oh, let me let me let me click it over here so you can see the whole plate. Yeah, the front face plate. And now I have uh, another face plate that I need to create from this for this this. Uh, portion and also eventually I need to create this bottom plate to cover up this this bottom portion but um we haven't done I hadn't gotten to that yet so right now so this morning so I was working on securing this face plate so I know that this face plate is actually going to um, mount to the main body via two screws here so I'll put two screws here, screw it in, but I need something to hold it over here. And I did not want to put screws in this surface. One thing, cause this surface is curved. Let me, let me uh, unhide this or un fix this transparency back on there. All right, get it back over here in the middle. Of course I clicked F if you didn't see that. Uh, my hand's starting to hurt a little bit. Let me switch. So now I'm using my left. All right, let me get reacclimated here. Um, so this panel right here, I have the panel. I secured it with two screws in the front, but on the side, I needed a way to keep it secured. So what I've elected to do is to create this feature, this feature right here. Oh, it won't, it won't highlight it. Okay, I created this feature right here and what it's gonna do is it's gonna hold a tab. So let's, let's turn this, let's, let's hide this. Okay, so it's gonna hold what I call a tab. So that, that, that piece that I just hid is gonna have a little tab that's gonna slide into this, this, um, I would say slot. This is blank space right here. So I'm gonna make a tab on that front face plate and it's going to slide into the slot and that will secure it keep it keep the face plate the plate from bending out um on that side it should work pretty good long as it long as the tab is large enough we should be good to go on that um so yeah that's what i'm gonna that's what i'm gonna do right now so let me let me let me unhide that thing Let's bring this all open. All right. Uh, so you'll notice I messed up my color. So just side note, as you can see, my radio has kind of several different colors. Let's, let's zoom in on it. Uh, yeah. So I, I put different colors and you, you may say, you know, depending on your taste, you may be like, well, what in the world? Why does it, why does the radio have so many colors? Let me just show you. Um, So I am a fan of controls, uh, all sorts of controls, whether they're um, industrial controls, I don't know, remote controls, just controls. For some reason, I've always liked controls. I like uh, um, video game controls, just controls. So with this being said, the inspiration for my radio, there's a couple of inspiration, but the inspiration far as like color and shape goes for the most part is my Xbox 360 custom controller. So when XO, let me, um, let me put it over here where you can see it. When Microsoft introduced the, uh, where you could customize your own Xbox controller and order it, 
I saw that and I just jumped on it. So I jumped on it and I was just, you know, I was, I was down even. And the funny thing about it is I don't even use the controller that much because <laughs> I don't even own an Xbox. Uh, I own a 360, but I don't own any of the new ones. And, um, yeah, I just don't have time to play that much, but I really like, I like controllers so much that, uh, I just spent the money on it, <laughs> but I'm glad cause it's, it's cool. I like it. I like it. I like custom stuff. Um, give me a second. Uh, but that, as you can see, the color scheme is pretty much kind of almost, almost exact. And another thing about my control or about, um, playing, um, on Xbox is the way I hold a control is I hold it in claw, right? So if you're, if you're not familiar with that, let's come back to the, um, screen. We'll do this one. So if you're not familiar with that claw, many people hold, hold the control, just, uh, thumbs on the stick, thumbs on the stick, fingers wrapped around the back. That's the way, that's the way it was actually designed. Um, intended in the design you know your hands wrap around your hand your your fingers wrap around the grips and you use your thumbs on the sticks right well i for my left hand i i like to hold it in claw meaning i uh i use my index finger and my thumb on the joystick let me see if i can trying to <laughs> get in the camera and stuff use my index finger and thumb on the joystick and then use my uh remaining fingers to push the button so i hold um, the right hand, I hold the right hand normal, but I hold the left hand in, in a claw. So my fingers kind of wrap around in, in the top. And so with that being said, that was my, that was kind of my inspiration on how, how I wanted the controller, my own personal controller to be hero, the hero TX 2022. The Hero TX 2022. 2022. 2022. 2022. 2022. 2022. Yes, sir. So that's um, that's how I wanted it to be. So anyway, so that kind of talks speaks to the shape, and I'll go into that a little bit more. But this was I was talking about colors. Um, the panel, the panel's yellow because I, I was I was playing with different colors, um, to see which one how it would look but it turns out i don't i don't think i would like the yellow in the front let me actually i can i can <clears throat> i'm gonna remove this yeah right uh, i i wasn't feeling that too much I, I don't know just like i like having and i said yellow but it's not really yellow it's supposed to be uh khaki that's the name of the that's the name of the uh filament the color of the filament that i'm using is khaki which when I saw it, I was like, hey, well, that's interesting. Maybe I'll try it, give it a try. So anyways, I, I got khaki. And I don't think I feel, I don't, I don't know. It just looks patch, it looks too patchworky right there, I think. Um, it was originally supposed to be orange, like the Xbox controller. Um, but I don't think I was feeling that either because it didn't give a, it didn't give a, a, a contrast between the buttons and the bumper. I might play with some more, you know, take some, maybe change it a couple of different ones and take some screenshots and just kind of compare them. But, um, right now I kind of settled back on the gray. I thought the gray, just having it blend in and making, making, although, uh, the body itself is made up of multiple pieces, the face plates, the main, the main, uh, upright, the main top part and stuff, although it's actually made of several pieces with them all being the same color, it makes it look like it's just one solid body. So I think I'm gonna stick with the gray for now. And like I said, this is just the version, this is version one. So it's, um, it's experimental, you know? So uh, back to what we were supposed to be doing. Let's put this tab on here. So we'll just disregard this color. Maybe I should just get rid of it. And um, if you're watching the keyboards, like I said, you'll, you'll probably see me switch hands like over and over and over. Constantly like switching hands. And it really just depends on which one is, 
you know, I just try not to have uh, pain. All right, so we're gonna make a, a tab. I selected on that face, the flat face right here. I'm gonna just click my, oh, actually, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna do um, a center line on this, on the long line, the, the, the long le length of that side, right? This is the before the curve and the edge. So I got that. Mm. Let's bring a little rectangle. That's cool. I'm going to I'm going to collect select the midpoint, match it to the center line so I'm making them coincident. Bam. Uh should be able to do the yep. Um select the dimension tool. I'm going to make this a little under 3 quarters because I think I made the slot three quarters. I, I could actually make it the same size because um, I'm gonna wind up filing this tab anyway. But I'm gonna try to make it a little under. I'll make it four five, seven, four, five. And then for the thickness of the tab, I'm gonna make it, um, I've already made the slot a little bit bigger. So I'm gonna make it 0.06 uh, to 0.05. So I made it a little thinner. All right, let's go and extrude. Now I finally, I think I finally kicked the habit of actually getting out, getting out of, exiting out of the sketch and then hitting the extrude button. Now I can, I know, or I've gotten the habit where I'll just go to the extrude button and let, and let it just automatically kick me to the thing. So I'm gonna switch hands so I can get my fingers on this number pad. Oh crap, I didn't mean to do that thing got a little stuck here all right number pad number pad number pad number pad uh quarter inch we'll do that quarter inch all right um i'm not gonna worry about chamfering anything let me remember oh man okay so so you guys know these are going to be 3d printed parts so while i'm designing them I had to have, I need to have in mind how I'm gonna print it. <coughs> what exactly, how exactly I'm gonna print it. Now this is interesting. I, I had intended on printing it like this. So if you're looking at it from the, from the front, it would be sitting up like this. If I'm looking at it from the, from the top, it'd be, it'd be vertical. Yeah. That's the way I was gonna print it. If I was looking top down at the printer, it would look like this. But now that I just added this tab, now that I just added this tab, I made it a little bit, uh, well, I mean, it's not that complicated. It's gonna be supported through here. It's gonna be supported all the way through there. I guess adding supports there isn't no real big deal. Maybe that's not even a big deal. All right, I'm gonna save this, Control S. If you're not in the habit of saving, I, I've, I've worked working, you know, I have a, a full-time job, right? And, um, and I've been working with, you know, different colleagues and stuff. And a lot of colleagues I see, they do not save often. Um, like I say, because I edit video and have been doing some other things for quite a long time, I save often. I, I, I save almost after every change uh most of the times and we'll you'll we'll watch and see if i'll walk, go back and watch the tape and see if if uh that's the case okay looks like we got some clearance i left some clearance so i made the slide a little bit deeper and it's a little bit wider and taller okay so so you see so back to what i was saying earlier i hope you guys can see now if i was really fancy with it you could make it snap or something since you can do undercuts and stuff in 3d printing but I don't want it to be stuck in there. I don't, cause you won't have any real leverage to pull it off. And there's no, I don't want, uh, there's no, it's not like injection molding or something. And this, and then because of the way it's 3D printed, you have to watch out with the layers because they break real, things break really easy along the layers. I've already tried to make a phone case and have snaps on there, having uh, things that bend. And that is a recipe for disaster, at least depending on what material you're using. I was using just PLA and that was not working. So now, 
All right, so I got this tab. I'm pretty pleased with that. I know I can file it um, and adjust it as necessary. I'm gonna do something here because I don't know if I don't like this edge, and I never, I don't intend on leaving the edge there. But the question I have to ask myself. Sorry, I just really enjoyed this track. Um, so the question I have to ask myself is, uh, do I want to try to blend it? I don't even, I think it's too far to even try to blend it in, you know, like take this bottom portion and then add to it to try to blend. I think it's going to, I mean, look at it. Hold on. Let me, let me zoom out. Give me an F. I mean, you see this? I mean, this this angle right here isn't. I don't think that's gonna actually come out. Uh, it may. Oh, that's because of um. That's where it's. Uh, I still think it's gonna come short. Let me go in here and see if I can. What I can do if I can. But if I do this, I mean, I can print it upside down. Let me see something. I'm gonna to try to chamfer this edge. So I hit chamfer, I'm gonna go for about an eighth of an inch. There's another reason why I like using my left hand for the mouse and, and then using the right for the number pad. It makes it so much easier to type numbers. I'm gonna change this to uh, 30 degrees. Make it 60. I always forget which one is. I'm just gonna see what this looks like. I don't like this um, edge. So this is something I'm really gonna have to try to figure out because I can't, I don't wanna. I don't want to build my own controller and then it's like, okay, well, I just copped out on that part. Well, that actually, you know what? That doesn't look as bad. I'm sure that doesn't feel that good on the hand. I'm not sure if that line was the right. Oh, I don't think I had that line just right. So I may need to adjust that some more, but I mean, if, if I could go with this, this would actually help me a lot because then I wouldn't have to go back and do, I wouldn't have to go back and, and modify this. But having this lip at the bottom, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. And your finger's gonna be there too. And, that, and this lip is gonna carry, so when I, when I put this part, when I put this panel in, you're gonna have to try to mate to that as well. Mm. Let me see. Let's go to this. See how we how this how this goes. Listen. Chamfer. Uh. Oh gosh, that was all right. That is not right at all. Let's, let's Oh, because it's, um, put that, at, put that at 30. How come it's not going, uh, as far as it didn't do that in the first place. Um, I don't think that's right, but I'm going to do that just to see what, I know it wasn't that 60 though. That wasn't right. Let's see what this. All right, let's just, um, little AOL, little AOL, uh, reminiscing there. 
for those who are old enough to know and have used dial up. All right, we put it at 45, which is, I know that's not, I'm trying to see. That's weird how that, that angle is just like all over the place. Oh, okay, I see. I kind of see what's wrong. Let me, let's see here. Let's see here. Um, let's make this a little less, right? Oh, wait a second. They have, oh, you can, on all configurations. Okay. I see that. That's cool. Um, let's make it. Let's make this 0.09375. think that's right either I'm so confused I don't think this is I'm gonna put it at 50 degrees and see what happens so I, I thought it was I, hmm. okay that that point nine three seven five is close now it's just the angle is jacked up <clears throat> Like it's like 55 or something. It isn't not quite. I don't know if it's quite 60. Let's we can go for 60. I think 60 is gonna be too much though. Uh, let's 55. Um, uh, okay, so yeah, 50 55 was close. I'm gonna save this. Control S. Oh, let's see how, what do we, what do we think about this? I don't think that's going to feel good in your hand, to be honest. I think if you're going to do this type of thing, I think you need, it needs to come down the whole way because ha having it come and then it, a step and then it continue on I don't that's kind of a cop-out for me because it's like okay cool this is a little easier to print I mean a little bit you know even though it, it doesn't perfectly match I mean I didn't really fudge it to make those perfectly match and then you can go back and I think you can go back and fill it these uh, edges to make them I'm gonna have to think about that. <clears throat> Preferably not the way I'd want it to be, but it's gonna. I'm gonna have to spend some time to, to go back and redo this to make this edge to make this edge so that it mates better with this. Because those panels are kind of an afterthought. Because I, I didn't really. I wasn't when I originally made the shape and stuff. I wasn't thinking about having panels I mean I don't think this is a deal breaker because it's kind of interesting you know you kind of see the 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 um, kind of makes the distinction really between the two um, halves but I just don't want it to be uncomfortable I don't want my hand to be like oh I can't stand this this edge thing, this, ugh. So that's what I'm concerned about. I'm gonna switch views here. All right, so we got that. Um, <clears throat> Maybe I'll go ahead and see if I can make this. In this next, I got 20 something minutes. Let's see if I maybe start doing this other. Now the other problem I had was when I made this bumper, the bumper plate for the front, I had anticipated on, I had not anticipated on it flaring out on the sides and then having to come back and flare out the original sides so that, you know, that I could smooth this out, this transition. I think this really probably needs to be a little bit longer, but um, I may try to reverse fillet this or make a curve or something here, smooth this out because this is where your, this is where your hand grips. 
that's specifically where my hand's gonna go. Uh, I can do it on, I can do it here. Let me see. Specifically, specifically where my hand's gonna go on that side and I don't really know if um, I don't know how it's gonna feel what I really oh, excuse me what I really wanted to do what I really, really wanted to do really, really, really. I want to do those uh, those foam pads that they have on, on some of the premium radios uh, they have the the grips, and I really wanted to do that, but I I don't know what um, material. I don't know. I don't have readily available material. I don't know what I don't know what to use. Um, I, I mentioned before, or I, maybe I haven't on this video, but I've I've molded in silicon before, so maybe I could possibly do it uh, silicon. Drop it. Don't stop. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Some of the synth wave the hits synth pretty hard. So, um, but back to what I was saying. Let me get those things right. I don't have the uh, material for this yet to figure out how to do. I figure on this version, I won't worry about it. But on when I go back to remake this, um, I really would like to have those grips because I really would like that soft, like they have the those, that gel soft. Um, I'm trying to think of what has it on it. Um, I know that I'll I'll think of something. I'll find I'll find something that already has it on there, so I can uh, use it as an example. But I'd really like that. I think that would be really premium. Let's talk about. Speaking of, while we're looking at the radio, let's talk about the joystick. So if you look at, if you look at uh, my actual 3D model, the joysticks I have on there are gimbal. They're uh, resistor, your typical RC, uh, I'm sorry, potentiometer gimbals, right? And I bought those a, a, a while back. They're affordable there. I think they're maybe $39 each. So, you know, pretty cool. I'm, I'm, I was pleased with them. And they work, you know, like I said, when I had it set up with the cardboard, it works. It works fine. But then I got what, well, what really got, what really uh, turned me on to these other joysticks was I saw this uh, radio called, radio called the Paladin 18. EV from Fly Sky, and I'll, I'll bring some images of it. We'll talk to, we'll talk about it because we're gonna be working on this project for a while. So we'll talk about it. Um, but man, when I saw that radio, so it's, it's an actual, it's a radio for ground vehicles. Um, it's got 18 channels, and it's got two um, Hall Effect uh, joysticks with LED that are like LED lit. Uh, they got the, they got the rotation. You got the up, down, left, right, push buttons and rotation. And it just, it was gorgeous. I saw that, it was gorgeous. But I I like the, um, I like how tall, I like the Hall Effect joysticks, but I don't like the fact that they're so tall. They're a little bit too tall. They're like, seem like they're like two inches tall or something. And the, the, the gimbals I have on there now, they're relatively tall uh, in height, as far as like the stick height. So that got me to searching online to what else was available. And I ran across this German country, uh, German country, German company called Megatron. And they sell these Hall Effect sensor, uh, Hall Effect censored uh, joysticks, three axis, up, down, left, right, and the rotating knob, uh, and they're low height. So they're they're about the same height as what I have, or a little maybe a little less, but they have the rotating axis. 
And um, I was just, I was like, when I saw them, I was like, man, I want those. So I did some investigating. Uh, of course, thankfully, they had the CAD model readily available on their um, on their um, website once you give them your email address. But I did some searching online to see where I could uh, find them or whatever. Or actually, I sent them an email. They sent me an email back and said, hey, here's the number to our distribution center, or our North American distribution uh, center company or whatever, whoever sells our stuff. So I, I reached out to them. And I asked them for a quote, and they gave me a quote. These joysticks, these these two joysticks are 170 bucks a piece. 170 bucks a piece. A piece. A piece. <laughs> and here, here's the real kicker. Here's the real kicker. The lady said, uh, "Freight to get them over here." Well, she said the lead time was like I don't know some ridiculous amount of weeks, but that that, that wound up changing because she said that they uh, she called the company. Megatron in Germany and they had them in stock so um, before they were saying well they have to make them blah 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 so there's some ridiculous lead time but they got some in stock but she said the freight to get over here was this peep this peep this watch watch a hundred and seventy seven dollars so the freight to just get them over here was 170 bucks so all, all in all was that 170 170 that's two was that 340 and then another 170 it was that four four or ten for yeah something like that oh i was just like bruh is that what is that what is that what I, is that what we're doing is that what we're doing uh that's quite a lot i'm sorry that was a, no no oh yeah no i did that wrong um three five ten that's what it was sorry 510. I want to check my math because I was trying to do it in my head. I don't claim to be a mental math expert, so. Uh, yeah. So 510. 510. Wow. Let me let me look that. Let me do that again just to make sure that I'm not missing something. That's three. Yep. Three times 170. 510. Now, mind you, 510 for maybe uh hundred more dollars that's the cost of the paladin radio so for that much i could just buy the whole radio or buy a whole radio complete package with two it comes with two receivers one transmitter two receivers 18 channels case and all this stuff this is a nice radio I, i'm i'm really i would buy it only for the fact that it's not uh it won't be unique to me. This radio will be uniquely mine. You know what I'm saying? If I make this, there's not going to be too many people that have it. And depending on how it feels, there may not be too many people who want it. <laughs> but I want it because it's, uh, you know, I like my own stuff. <sighs> so that's where we are with that. That's I just give me a little background on these. Uh, so I have these in the model, even though those aren't really the correct joysticks for this particular version that I'm building um, but once I get this version done up and working uh, have done all the prints and see what what works and what does not work I'm without a doubt I will be trying to see if I can get these other uh, joysticks in there also because it adds two more channels um, so that's what I'm trying to do with that right now Let's see, what else we got going on? Oh, okay, so I was gonna see if I can try to do this front panel tonight. Uh, I got 12 minutes, let's see. I gotta, think of, I gotta think about how would I do the front panel. So am I gonna try to make it out of a configuration? How did I do this one? This bumper, is this a actual configuration? I think it, it may be, let's see. Let's see here. Actually, it is not. Oh, you know what I did? I, I know what I did. What I did was, gosh, what did I do? It's been a, it's been a little while. Oh man. What did I do? I'm not even sure how I did that. 
Did I offset from this? What is this? Mid plane. Okay, I just uh, okay, I just made it, and then I went and cut it. I just made that sh that profile, and then I just started cutting. Seems weird. Seems weird that this isn't. That's not the bottom. I'm not really sure what happened there. It's been a long time. But I do know what I I do know that I wanted this to get this profile, this sketch right here. I know I copied it. Uh, I believe I copied it. Hmm. I have something dangling here. Okay. Hmm. I have to plan. I have to plan this in my head before I can execute it. All right. So let's get that down. So the thing is, I want, I want this shape. So I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna open this up. All right, I'm gonna get myself normal. So I'm looking normal to, uh, yeah. So now it is this, ooh. Okay, so I'm gonna start all the way over here and get this whole sweep, that whole, all right, previous view. So if you didn't know, that's the previous view. I didn't use that much uh, in the past, but now that I, I, I'm a little bit more aware of it now. So if you, you move something out of the way and you need that, yeah, it's like, I want that view back, you can. I think you, I'm not sure if you can just hit undo, but you can hit previous view, all right. So I think what I did was, um, I did sketch. Can I do offset? I do offset there. Ah, uh, I think I, Let's go straight. that now hey I think I can do it this way let me just hit offset and yeah so I don't have to go back and redraw that okay and then I can just put it at an eighth of an inch okay 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 all right all right so let's do that close the shape up um so what I believe I'm doing is I'm making the sketch and then I was going to, I'm going to copy the sketch from this one and take it to a new model. That's what I, I believe that's what I did. Um, when I was working on that other one. So what I'll do is let me see where copy is sketch. Um, oops, I think. I think when I'm in sketch, I think I've actually, let me see here. Let's go into sketch, edit sketch. And I have my gestures on, let's, ah, oh, shoot. And this should be copy, uh, entities to copy. I'm gonna get all those. And then I'm gonna say start point. But I, this isn't, this isn't the same copy as, hold on. I want to select those and I'm going to say control C copy, right? And I'm going to, uh, 
I'm gonna close out that sketch and I'm gonna come over here to a new part. Uh, I better just use a regular one for now. All right, I'm gonna to say top plane. I'm going to put a sketch and then I'm going to say paste. There we go. So I'm gonna go ahead and let's just move. Can we just move this? Crap, don't do that. Trying to move all the, uh, can I hit move? Um, move entity, entities. Grab them. Uh, let's just say start point. Yeah. Okay, I can live with that. Oh, okay. All right, so we got, we got that. Now let's just to mention this now all right so here's a question to you guys to the viewers would you just highlight this and just fix it or would you try to well you know what i don't need to change anything the dimensions are set um how do i do that uh how do I highlight it? Can I do that? Can I just say fix? Fully defined sketch. Because I'm not going to, I'm not going to change any of these dimensions. Of it. What? Let's get rid of these. Did I miss something? I didn't, I didn't read what that said. So, ah, fix. There we go. Huh, Cause I, I wasn't gonna change any of those. So I was like, uh, I'm not gonna go through the trouble of trying to, you know, dimension all these random things. Uh, let's see, let's see. Extrude. I'm gonna do midpoint, mid plane. I don't know how much it's gotta be extruded right now. I'm just gonna do it just for the video for now. Well, of course, you'll see me come back and fix it. <laughs> All right, let's name this thing. Let's say, save. Uh, let me see, where's that other bumper at? Oh my gosh. Where did I put that thing? I do not see it. I don't see any of the parts. Let's, nope. Um, I'm missing something here. I see, all right, I see that. Ah, bumper, here we go. All right, name it two. Oh, you guys can't see the, um, you didn't see the dialogue. All right. All right, let me, let me just bring this piece in here. Oh, uh, let me bring it in the major model. Okay, let's say insert. All right, let's, oh gosh, where's that thing going? Bring that over here. What in the world? Why is this thing out in space? All right, so now we're gonna rotate it. Uh, I thought I had something where I could rotate it, but I don't. Okay, I've made it way too big, but that's okay. I'm just trying to get it in here and faced up right now. Let's get normal to that. Let's just... Let's make these coincident. That'll that'll get that in there. Concentric. 
Oops. Okay. Alright, and you should be able to... Let's see if we can make those match. Hey, it didn't blow up. Hey, okay. That's pretty much what we had to do. Uh, let me slide it up a little bit so that those edges kind of meet. All right. Well, from there, it's just about uh, cleaning this stuff up. Let's let's open this thing, Majig, up and turn that sketch off. One, two, one, two. It's checking my volume. Hopefully, that sound okay. Had a few little issues earlier. Let's just hide that. Save. <sighs> all right. How y'all feeling? Out? How y'all feel out there? All right. All yeah. Right. All yeah. Right. All yeah. All right. So, um, oh yeah, it's about time to wrap up. All right. So we, we actually made some progress. I feel good. You know, I had to do a lot of talking, trying to explain what I'm doing with this new show. Uh, but even in re even with that, I was still able to um, actually add a tab and put start this front bumper, which has been a, it's been I haven't worked on it, so I'm gonna make this a little smaller. <laughs> let's let's make this how about an inch and a half. Uh, we'll leave it the off color. Yeah, I wanted, to, I wanted to see how it would, if it would, uh, I'll go back up to here. There you go. Kind of see how it looks. Also, like I said, because of this, I'm going to have to, uh, I'm thinking I'm going to have to flare this out and do the tab thing again, which is, it's going to be a little weird. I don't know how that's going to feel on my hand because it's like this has a curve that my fingers are going across or whatever and then you're going to have a bump out now if you could blend that if you could come back in here with that soft rubber stuff or something like that maybe you could really trick that out i don't know let me think about it sleep on it think about it but that's it. All right. Let me let me wrap this up. Thank you guys for tuning in and joining uh, me on this session. This first session on February 1st, 2022 of the Design by Purpose show. Let me. All right. Again, I'm your host, Robotronics 09, DJ DVP, or Damon for short. Uh, yeah, and um, I'm glad you were able to join. I will be doing this. I'm, I'm, I have to do it because I have to make this stuff. And so I might as well be streaming. So look for the stream to show up. Um, be sure to uh, follow me on Twitch. I will repost these on the YouTubes. Um, you'll see that. But yeah, so far, that's what we're going to be doing. So I hope you can join me and, um, you know, and we can learn something, grow in our engineering design skills together. So until next time, I will see you guys. Thanks for joining. Peace out. Hey, I can't leave. Ah, 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 ah. The button's not working. Ah, ah, I can't leave. I can't. Leave. I can't leave.